Hey, everybody, check this video out because in this video I show Big D how to set up a Festool router to work on the Festool guide rail to get a perfect mortise every time. All right, Sedge, uh, trying to set up my 1400s to a mortise. Mm -hmm. um, I want to use the track. Okay, no problem. So what's the width of the mortise? 18 millimeter. Okay, so I see you have installed on there an 18 millimeter bit. Yep. Pretty easy. Okay. So, do you have one of these? As a matter of fact, I do. Do you have two of these? I didn't think I did, but I looked in the bottom of my sustainer and they were there. See, that's where they go missing. Those are the rods. So, this is what is known as a guide stop, and with the guide stop, you get this. It's a support bracket. I'll show you how this all goes together. It is a great system for doing mortises or dados or tenons or whatever. Okay, so when you first get your guide stop, the rods go in here like this. It's pretty simple. I'll just get them in here. They're locked with these two knobs. And what I've always liked to do when I do this is I kind of offset them because they go right in here and lock with the central clamping knob. Oh, nice. Okay, but if you offset it, it's a little bit easier. But there's a little bit of setup in the beginning with this. So I'm gonna step over here and you have to, this, you only have to do this once. Now, you can use the guide stop, there's two grooves here. It gets kind of confusing. It never goes on both of these. Okay. Because you lose micro adjust this way with it. It can either go here or here, and I prefer this way here. Now, the first thing you gotta do, and this is why I put the rods in first on the guide stop, is I check to see if there's any lateral tolerance, okay? In other words, there's slop in here. So what you wanna do, is there's two posi drive screws here and you see what happens is that pushes the tab forward so I'll just take it and go like this and go like this to push the tabs and it's a back and forth to see how smooth it is okay okay now feel that okay you want that a little bit of friction in there right but also there's no slop not at all it's pretty simple so what you want with this big D is you want it to be a little bit of friction on there but also, here's a trick that I've always used. I take a little bit of Renaissance wax like this. A little goes a long way with this. And I'll actually take it and I'll put some on those tabs. And right in here, there's a point of contact here as well. Okay. And right here. That way there, now feel that. You still get that friction in there. And right. It's a little bit smoother. All right, it's a smoother ride, that's for sure. Okay, so let's get the guy stop and the rods attached to the router. Okay. Everything is tuned up. I'm gonna slide, see how easy that is? No. Nice. Now, here's the part that goes missing a lot. A lot of people will put the router out here. It's not out. And a lot of people will put it on this, feel this right here. See that PFT green strip? Yeah. It's got a little, little hump to it. Yeah. I always bring it up to it here, okay. but not on it, and I lock it in. But here's the inherent problem. See how it falls off the rail? You know your rail combined with that little strip is a five millimeter offset. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is for. Come around here so you can see this. It's got a scale on it, okay, and a knob. It's a support bracket and what it does, it keeps the router in the same plane at the level of the guide rail. But Ooh. you're gonna see how important that scale is in a couple of minutes. So that is your basic setup of the router on the rail with a guide stop. Now let's set it up so it's perfect to do that mortise and we'll do the layout on that. Awesome. Okay, so I did a little bit of layout and we're gonna do from here to here is 18 millimeters. And I see how some people have always tried to bring the uh, router bit down and try to line up on either one. But what's nice is I scribed a center line, okay? And that is so important. We're going to stat it precisely on this line and we're going to stop it precisely on this line. So I brought the lines all the way out for line up. Okay. Now, hopefully we can get this on the video. But what a lot of people don't know about this router system is right here and I'm going to darken it. See that? That's the exact center line of that router bit because these rods are precision ground and there's no slop in there. Okay, so what we can do is just take that and bring it right over here like that and line it up right on that line so it's absolutely perfect. That's awesome. Now, with, if you have an MFT, the beauty of that is check this out right here, see that? Now you have perfect, what? Repeatability. 
Okay, now here's the other kicker, and this is why I brought these out. Let's do a little bit of math, Big D. All right, let's it's do Sunday it. morning. You gotta wake up a little. <laughs> what is half of 18? Nine. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> hey, Mo. Okay, Chris, give me this so everybody can see this. We have the scale right here, and zero is the exact center of the bit. So if I take that and I line it up, I'm gonna bring it right to nine. Ooh, take our time, there we go. Can you see it from over there, Big D? Yep. Okay, this is known as a limit stop. It comes with the track saw for plunge cutting, but if I slide it on here, see how that is becoming like a little joinery machine? That's my stopping point. So now when I bring this down and bring it to here, it'll stop right there. So what we have is I have another limit stop on this side. Go ahead and slide that in. And I'm gonna bring this back to nine forward of the cut. See that? Just like that. So now you don't even have to think about it. You can stop and start it precisely and get a perfect mortise. That's awesome. Take 10. Okay, hey Big D, remember <laughs> how to set depth on a router? <laughs> Maybe, but we'll use, the, use the gauge block. Okay, so right. show me how. All right, so we gotta bottom it out first. Okay, right? why don't you lock the knob. Lock it. Take 11. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> hey, I, just so, so every, no, 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 we're gonna keep doing this because I'm gonna tell you, this is the part of a router that people get so confused and they forget if they don't use it every day. It's really easy to set. You're already halfway there, so go ahead and show me the rest. Now we're not going to use the scale out. No. So what did you do? You let you let the. Okay, you got to release that. Okay, you're good. You're using the gauge block. Just leave it in there because okay. you're tilting it a little. Okay. Press down on here like that. Now lock it in. All right. Okay. So now take it out. Now what happens is we're going to go in exactly six millimeters because as I plunge it in and I continue to plunge it, what will happen is we'll, that's six millimeters of depth, mm -hmm. precisely. Yep. So don't overthink it. All right, Sitch, so, so this is gonna move on us at all while we're routing? It could, the neoprene strips of the rail should hold it down, but let's be a little more secure. Now I could do this, I could take a clamp because this hole is in close proximity, okay, and put it like this. But what happens is these rods have a tendency to hit this. So I wanna show you another trick that I learned early on. This is really a good trick also with a uh, track saw. You see how that's this profile is lower than the, the track right here, that rib? So that will never be in the way. It gives you a nice, secure hold down. Awesome. Okay, Big D, we got it all set up. Good job. Um, I think the next thing we need to talk about is a little bit of safety. Okay. Um, what I'm going to have you do, I'm not going to do this, I'll have you do it so you get the feel of it. <clears throat> We're going to be putting on power pretty quick here. So what I want to do is make sure that that is completely cycled off. Yep. Let's get the dust extraction in first. Okay. okay. And you notice how my hand's not leaving this. It's good rule of thumb. I'm going to twist that on. Once the power goes on, it, this does not leave. My hand doesn't leave this. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to step you through. I won't run it. So when you turn it on, I like to do it like this. Hold my hand up like this. You turn it on. Okay. You'll lock it with this button. You'll take it, you'll push down all the way in, and you're gonna go forward like this. You're going to bring it up. I always come back if there's any dust left in the mortise, and then I'll cite, you'll cycle it off. You see how my hand is never left. Never left once. Ever. So what I've seen people do is they go like this while it's running. This is a friction fit, and they don't hold on to it, and that could come off like that. So that is why that is the proper technique from this side, plunging it and going forward. Okay, right. so let's give it a whirl. All right.
Okay, Chris, come in here so you can see the big D. Go ahead and grab this and set it to the side. Now, just take it right off. Okay, so look how precise that is. See how it stopped right there? And look where it started. Now, you see that little extra dust? That's probably because I don't have a 36 millimeter hose in there. Go ahead, big D. Let's just take that up and set that out. And you'll see how perfect that mortise is. Nice and clean. And there's your edges and right on the center line. So as you can say, Big D, you did a great job. We started and stopped it precisely. Mm -hmm. And as we always say to wrap this up, be positive. Stay sharp.